All right, everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be comparing the direct potting method with the fig pot method of rooting fig cuttings. And I'll inevitably, every time I put out a video on rooting fig cuttings, I get the same question. Why don't you use the fig pot method? Well, in this video, I want to explain the differences and why I prefer the direct potting method. I don't think there's certainly uh, a better method or I think it really comes down to preferences. They all accomplish the same thing, right? At the end of it, you get a rooted fig cutting. So um, here's some of the differences and the biggest benefit I can think of, we'll start with the fig pot method, is that that bag that I was just pointing to. Um, you can see through it, right? So you can see the roots. You can see if you're doing the right thing, things are progressing. But that's mainly for newer uh, newer growers, right? If I have really thick, big leaves, um, strong growth coming out of my fig cuttings, you bet that there is going to be some really strong roots attached to that. Um, additionally, the bag is a really nice way of conserving moisture and, and uh, keeping the soil moisture at a static moisture content. That's really important for rooting fig cuttings. We don't want things too dry, right? Because then they won't root. We don't want things too wet either because then they'll rot. So if you're having trouble with rot, you may want to adjust your temperatures. Maybe they're too high, but you also maybe want to consider getting a, a bit more of a well-draining mix or using the fig pot method because the fig pot method, you put that soil in the bag at the appropriate moisture that you select, right? We want things moist. We don't want things wet. We don't want things dry. So, um, you know, you can really control that and keep that at a static moisture content, like I said, in those bags, right? The water's not evaporating. Unlike the fig pot method, which is the method that I use, here in this closet, the date of filming here, it was 27% humidity, 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And these lights on each of these pots is getting uh, blasted. You know, there's just a ton of evaporation, right? So the point is I'm constantly being able or having to water these, these pots every two to three weeks. So by doing that, I'm adjusting the moisture content pretty frequently, right? Things are drying out, then I'm watering them, then they're drying out, and then I'm watering them. So having that direct pot or having that fig pot method at a static moisture content is just going to be perfect because there's that race that happens. And most of you guys don't know this, but... There's a race that happens between the harmful microbes that are trying to rot the cutting versus the the fig cutting itself callousing and then forming roots. So if you're able to control that moisture, you're just going to have a much higher success rate from the beginning. Now, for me, uh, that's clearly a big disadvantage uh, that the fig the direct potting method has, and it's a bit more complex, right? Because then I have to come in here water it every two, two to three weeks, make sure the moisture content's perfect or as perfect as I can get it. Really pay attention to these things. Um, but I'm thinking, you know what, maybe to adjust the fig pot or the direct potting method and make it a bit of a better method is that I could find a way to enclose the, the soil and make sure that moisture doesn't escape in a similar way that the fig pot method does. So if I can come up with something or someone else can come up with something, I'd love to hear about it. But that's the biggest and probably the best way I know of for actually starting these fig cuttings and getting them to root out successfully. It's really important and a step that a lot of newbies uh, struggle with. Now, here are the two downsides I think to the direct or the to the fig pot method that I think the direct potting method is a bit better at. Now, um, let's pretend that the this microphone here is a fig cutting, and if you envelop this with a bag like the fig pot method does you're kind of adding a little bit of extra humidity. You're kind of creating a humidity dome. And I've seen a lot of photos of people's cuttings that they are just really flimsy and kind of uh, you know weak. When you take them out of the, the bag and up pot them into a bigger pot, uh, they have a little bit of adjusting to do, right? Maybe you have to spray them. I mean, there's just a lot of work that's involved with using humidity domes in general that I really don't recommend for anyone that's new to this. Humidity domes have killed hundreds of my cuttings. So I wouldn't do this. Um, instead, I would get yourself some parafilm like I recommend with the direct potting method. Now, uh, the basics behind the parafilm is that the bud or the leaves come out of that, that parafilm and are automatically adjusted to the room's humidity. So even if it's 10% humidity, they're going to be just fine. 
they're probably going to dry out pretty quickly, but you know, that'll work. So um, you could also, and a lot of you guys are probably thinking to yourself, well, why don't I just not use the bag? So if this is the cutting, I'll wrap this with the parafilm and pull the bag down so that it's just the soil that is getting that moisture that we need. And I would recommend that. I think that's a great idea. And that would make the fig pot method even better than it currently is. Now, my other gripe with the fig pot method though is that you have to up pot it, right? You have to take them out of the bag. Of course you know where the roots are, how many roots are there. You know how strong the plant is. But having to cut that and transplanting it out, you're just making things more complex. You're adding a little bit of more work. I don't want to have to spend, you know, one day after work putting these guys in, in larger pots, dealing with soil, you know, making a mess in the house, um, you know, just creating a whole bunch of problems, potentially like transplant shock, cutting these roots. It's just not something I want to do. And I really strongly believe that just in gardening in general and, and really in life in general, whether you are performing as an athlete, performing as an artist, you're speaking like I'm speaking to you guys right now. I just strongly believe that we should be making things less complex. We should be simplifying things and we'll be performing at a much higher level. Us as humans, for whatever reason, just love to overcomplicate things. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. This was the direct potting method versus the fig pot method. If anyone has any results or something they would like to share from either method, I would love to hear it or even some tips on how to improve each method, uh, please post them down in the comments below. Again, thank you guys for watching and uh, take care.